Oh, the moment you guys have all been waiting for. This is the Elecraft K2 stack that I got from Huntsville Ham Fest. So the first thing that we got was a big stack of manuals, which should give us some clue as to what's going on in here. So there was some information about a power amplifier fluctuation. We'll have to look into why this was printed out, but it was printed out and it was kept with it. So there's obviously some reason why it's there. 100 watt stage and RS-232 IO add-on kit for the radio. Normally you don't see these fins on the back of the radio. Normally this is a solid panel, but the 100 watt amplifier stage occupies that space. Elecraft manuals are awesome. If you ever want to know how radios work, just get the manual. They're, they're free to download off the website. You don't need to own the device. It wouldn't hurt to own it. I mean, don't get me wrong. You'll get a lot out of just reading these manuals. So this is the KAT100 automatic antenna tuner, and we have that in the box, so we'll take a look at that. K2 accessories, error codes for the KPA100 amplifier, the KNB2 noise blanker, KIO2 aux IO module, the KIO2 programmer's reference, so this would be your cat control, uh, K2 temperature compensated PLL, KAF2 audio filter and real-time clock, interesting, the K160 RX 160 meter module with receive antenna switch, Elecraft K2 transceiver manual, and this is just page after page of building this thing. Let's see, how far do we get before we stop building. 77 pages worth of build instructions. Excellent. This would have been a fun kit to build. I'm not sure if I have the courage to build something like this yet. Probably do. And even if I don't, you will learn along the way and that will be a fantastic thing for you to do. This radio did not come with a microphone. I got this big mess of wires that did not include this. I had to go find this separately. This was fantastic because I didn't want to spend a lot on a microphone. I have a couple of Kenwood mics. I have a couple of Icom mics. They're the 8-pin. I even have a boom mic that I could plug into this, a desk stand mic that I could plug into this thing. So I just wanted a quick microphone in case we were going to use it while we were at Montesano. We never wound up doing that. So it's not configured for any microphone that I'm aware of, let alone this one. But we'll, we'll get to that. The rest of the stuff that came in here, we have a power cord. It has ring terminals on the far end, and then it has power poles on the radio end, and this is a pretty neat little trick. I am I'm going to adopt this trick if I ever need it in the future. So inside of the power pole connections, there is a separate wire that runs out. So this wire here plugs into your power supply, this wire plugs into the back of the radio, and this flying wire here, which comes out of the, the power pole connector, would plug into whatever accessory it is that you need to plug into. So there's one, then we have another power cable here, and this one's a little bit longer, but they did the same thing on the end where we've got Anderson power pole connectors with this flying lead here for whatever accessory you want. I'm guessing that this would plug into the radio and this would plug into the tuner. We'll see if I'm right in a second. There's some, some joints in here, so I'm gonna have to fix that. There's a single fuse on the positive side, and then another couple of joints there, and then ring terminals on the end of this one here. Tuner interface and PC interface cable. So this would be cat control to the computer, tuner, this would be control from the radio, and there's two wires that lead out here. One of them goes straight to this tuner cable, and the other one goes off to the PC. So we'll play with that a little bit too. Let's get into these cases. Whew. These are really nice cases overall. These are made in China, rounded corners. These are actually tool cases, so you can pull this piece out of the top up here. Got a card for all your screwdrivers and tools and whatnot, or you can just leave it in there and not use it, which is what the previous owner did, and probably what I'm going to do as well. And then you have pluck and pull foam underneath. Is this? Oh, this isn't pluck and pull foam. This is this is just straight up cut foam. So there was the price tag that the gentleman had at the stand at Huntsville Ham Fest, $750. This radio was in good enough condition, very well cared for, nice cases and everything. So I did not dicker with him on the price. I was happy with the price. And sometimes that's just the way things work out. He said this space here went for a Kent paddle, which he was not including in the deal. And you can see on the listing, it's not included on the deal, so no problems there. Let's get the radio out. You guys have seen this a couple of times if you've been watching the live streams. If not, welcome to the Elecraft K2 radio. This is a beautiful piece of kit. I don't see a scratch or a blemish on this thing anywhere. Serial number 03440 for those that are playing along. So we have cat control, external speaker, cooling fan, power poles for power, a PA key to key the amplifier, ground lug, a 50 ohm antenna connection, another 50 ohm antenna connection, a receiving antenna connection, and then this one here is for 12 volts DC power. 
So I'm not sure. This is probably going to be the same situation here where it's it's one or the other. I'm pretty sure you don't need to plug both of those in. But we'll take a look at that. So on the first listing, the first listing, the first uh, note card, you saw that it was the K2-100, which was the radio, the tuner, and the power supply. So here is the power supply. MFG Mighty Light Switching Power Supply. It's a uh, model 4125 KAT100 automatic antenna tuner. And there's there's no buttons. These are all just straight LEDs. There's not a control button on the front of this. And on the back side, we have power in, auxiliary RF control. So this is that serial cable that I showed you earlier. Another ground connection. Tighten that up before it disappears. Uh, RF in, antenna one, antenna two. So there is a a way to switch antennas back and forth. We'll have to figure that out. The tuner has these little dimples on the top of it here, which would be a good place to put. There's a little bale on the bottom of the tuner also to give it a good viewing angle. That would be a good place to rest the radio. So the radio has matching holes inside of its feet. There is the radio setting there. Control cable for the amplifier, the amplifier, for the radio, its tuner, and the computer. So let's get this plugged in. And these are all labeled up nice and neat there. I like that. And this goes on the back of the K2. That goes on the back of the tuner. And then this end would connect eventually to the computer, but I'm gonna have to get an adapter to go to modern computers. Not gonna plug the microphone in until we get it opened up and take a look at how the microphone is configured. Gotta get the power supply set up. Before you ever plug a radio in for the first time on a cable, when it's used, that you haven't made, that you're not the one that set it up, I would recommend getting it tested out. So I have my multimeter here. This is the Kiwitz KM601. You've seen a couple of videos of this on the channel. And it's set to auto mode. We're gonna sit it down here. It needs a little bail to kick it up some. Let me see what I can find for you. I know, GMRS. This is what GMRS is good for. Does that work? Hey, that works, okay. So let's put the red lead in the red side. Let's put the black lead in the black side. And we're reading 13.64 volts output from the power supply and they are the correct polarity. So I'm not gonna mess the radio up there. And let's take a look at the other end here. This is supposed to be center positive according to the back of the radio. So we'll plug that in there. And we are center positive at 13.64. So the power supply checks out. And the GMRS radio was a great big help. We are all wired up. Here is the temporary station. Let's get this thing powered on. We're gonna turn on the power supply. Oh, I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but this, uh, this 4125 puts out some noise. Don't know if I like these power connections being on the front here, but in order to put them on the back, I'd have to cut the ring terminals off. Not cutting anything just yet. Let's power up the meter. Let's power up the radio. We got it plugged into an antenna right now. Oh, that's loud. Let's see, we're on 10 megahertz, seven megahertz. There's some FT8 sounds for you. Three and a half, so 80 meters. There's 160 in there. Antenna two. Why is that switching to antenna two? Oh, there we go. All right, we'll put that back on antenna one. I don't know why that did that. But there's your antenna switch button right there. All right, so 40, 30, 20, 17, 21, 24, 28. So there you go. It'll run from 160 to 10, just like it says. I like it. Okay, let's get this thing reconfigured with a dummy load in line and see what kind of noise it makes. We have the cell wave dummy load in line. We are on the 10 meter band. Let's put this into CW mode. That's L for lower side band. That's C for CW. All right, we gotta switch that key. Menu, all right, so we hit menu. Oop, did it wrong. Hold down menu to switch over to that. So we have hand, normal, and reverse. We're gonna put this into hand mode so we're in straight key mode. All right, so we are key down, 85 watts out, nice. Key down, 37 watts out. We got power all the way up, and the tuner's not happy.
There we go. So I was watching the SWR on the tuner. That was probably a leftover tune. Let's go back a band. And let's do that again on that band. Okay, tuner's happy. And our output is 82. Nice. Tuner's happy. Output is 82.7. Make the tuner happy. Output is 85. Alright, on 17 meters, output is 90. Tuner's happy on 20 meters. Alright, we got up to 90 on there. 30 meters. Getting more power out on the lower bands. 93 and a half. Change the mode over to CW on 70. On 70. On 40 meters. Oh, there we go. 106, 107 at the top. Double check the tune. It's climbing. 104, okay. 80 meters, give her a tune. I know you're not supposed to tune into a dummy load, but I'm making sure that the memories in the tuner are not stuck on. Oh, good output on 80. 111 I saw, 160. 160 is happy. 113, 114, 115, and climbing 116. Awesome. This radio is doing fantastic. I like it. All right, folks, just wanted to give you a quick update on the saga of the K2 radio. We got it out of the box. We got it all assembled. We did the power on, power on self-test, the post. We got uh, power output readings on every band, and she looks like a winner. In future episodes, we're going to do a teardown, go through the inside. I'm going to pick up the SSB module, so stay tuned for the building of that kit. They're currently on back order from Ellicraft right now, so can't do any SSB work on it yet. Uh, we're going to do some CW work, and I'm going to show you just how fantastic I am at CW. Not good. But uh, that's the, the process of ham radio. Everybody's always learning. It's all part of the journey, and that's what makes this thing fun. There is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll be over there waiting for you.